All right, so in this video, I wanted to take a look at making a MoGraph selection and adding a MoGraph weight tag to our MoGraph objects so that we can use those with our effectors. And I'm gonna start with a basic example and then I have a slightly more complex one after. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, nothing too crazy here. So if you wanna recreate it, you can. I have a basic cloner um, in grid mode and then one in linear mode here. So let's start with our cloner. And really what we're gonna be talking about is our MoGraph selection and MoGraph weight um, paintbrush that store that information in different tags. Now I already have a selection tag here, which um, we'll see a little bit later, actually just a second how to create. And honestly, it's not all that different than um, being able to store a selection of points, polygons, or edges. So it's almost kind of, I don't wanna say expected, but a natural extension of that. So with your cloner or other MoGraph object selected, come over to your MoGraph menu, choose MoGraph selection, and you'll notice nothing's really changed at this point until you start clicking. And that's when you will start to see a little dot for each of your clone. Now you can change the mode in which you make this selection, whether it's brush or kind of other selection tools, as well as the radius of your brush. You can also change the radius of your brush by clicking in the mouse, a middle mouse button, scroll wheel, and then moving the mouse left and right or even up and down works. Okay, and then it's just a matter of selecting these. So I could select, just make an interesting pattern, right? Maybe a couple in the middle. We'll do a few more. I think that's the middle. Did I get it centered? No, I think I'm one off. So there we go. Okay. And that is now saved in our MoGraph selection tag. Now you'll see I actually have multiple tags. They do have different names, okay? Which I actually think is pretty new, but uh, you don't have a way to actually name these like you do um, your normal stored selection. And the reason why I have two is because I wanted to make sure that you can have multiple selections because I do think that was a limitation previously in large part because the names weren't different. So what you can do, is with your cloner selected, create an effector such as a plane effector. And um, I could leave position turned on, but for fun, let's just uniform scale and set this to say negative one. Oops. Okay, help if I can type, there we go. And notice how that effector is getting applied to everything. Now, if you want to use a selection, what you have to do is go into the effector tab, find the selection field, and then drag a selection in there. So here's the first selection I made. Okay. And then the second selection I made. So great. Both of those work. What I also want to see is can you use them separately? And I'm guessing the answer is yes, because like I said, now they have different names. So I can do that. And then let's see, this one uses second selection. So this one will use the first. And there we go. So you can store multiple selections and you can have them used in multiple effectors. Now, what you can't do is use multiple selections in a single um, effector. So uh, keep that in mind. And honestly, the process for the weight map is very similar, okay? Both in terms of its creation and use. So I'm gonna select this back cloner here and make this brush much smaller. Um, come over here to my MoGraph menu again and choose weight paintbrush. And then once again, same adjustments for the brush size. However, now we are adding weight. And so if you've ever kind of painted weights when, when it comes to like rigging, it's a very similar process. So strength, um, you can determine how much you want and then um, mode you want. Add, erase, absolute, or smooth. And what I'm gonna do is just start clicking here and you'll see as I click, the color changes. So that one we'll say is max, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, I think. Let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, I think, six. So hopefully I got close to what I was going for there. Um, but what we can see is that the color gets progressively brighter. All right. And so it'll have less of the effector applied or and more of the effector applied depending on how much 
strength we added in our um, map here. Now, we can have our cloner selected. And if we have our map selected, and this also works for selection, when you add an effector, it will automatically use that selection or add that selection. And I think an easier way of visualizing this one is not going to be position, but scale. And honestly, I just need to do Y. Set that to negative one. You can see I got pretty close to what I was going for here, where um, we can see the strength essentially get less as we go down here, though, maybe not quite as evenly as it could have been. And really, those are the basics. Um, one thing I want to point out about both of these is that they can use fields. So you can use fields, you know, all your familiar box field, random field, you name it, um, and use that as a MoGraph selection and then have that go back in um, to the effector and choose what it's going to do. So that can be very useful. And we'll see that a little bit more in the more advanced example, which is what we are going to switch to now. And here we have it. I have a can. Now, I did not make this can or really a lot of this file. If you search for can in your asset browser, go back to the default kind of layout, um, this is the scene I started with here. So, um, um, oh, I'm not going to try and pronounce uh, that name, but this is the person who created it. So, very much. Big thank you to them. And I've just kind of modified this for my purposes here. Uh, now, this was originally created for this standard material, a uh, standard renderer, and I just modified it for Redshift since that's what I primarily use. And if we kind of render this, uh, this is what we have. Just a regular, you know, uh, product rendering here. Nothing too crazy. Now, there are some water droplets as well that were added. Okay. Um, and what I want to do is add some condensation onto the can here. And that's really what I am concerned with. And I've used this same process for doing a lot of different things, Oops. Um, whether it was people in an architectural scene, uh, trees, grass, or rocks in a landscape, a lot of different uses for the cloner in this type of setup. Um, and it becomes very powerful uh, with our selection and with our weight map. So I'm gonna create a cloner. And I have, let's just turn this off, three little kind of water droplets I've created off to the side here. So they're just, you know, half spheres where the axis is kind of at the back of them and, you know, change the shape a little bit just to, to make things a bit interesting. I'm going to take all three of those and put them into my cloner. And in my cloner, switch the mode to object. And for the object, I'm going to use the can. And you'll see we now have some droplets on there. However, they are not orientated the correct way. Find our, there we go, can again. All right, they're not really kind of sitting flat on it. They're going through this, which is absolutely what we do not want. We can fix that though in our cloner by going to the transform tab and just rotating these. In this case, it's on the pitch axis. I'm going to go for negative 90, and that should look. Pretty good. With that in the object tab, I can increase the count to however high I want. I don't mind getting a little bit crazy with this because we're about to, you know, change the size and eventually get rid of some of them. So if I see a big cluster I don't like, I can easily go in and fix that. I will also switch the uh, option here from iterate to random. So rather than just go down the list here, it's going to just randomly choose which one of the three I. Uh, it's going to use. That can just make things look a little bit more natural, though. I don't always agree that it's random. Speaking of random, let's add a random effector to adjust the size here a bit. I'm going to have my cloner selected. Come over here to my effectors, choose random. And that's just going to do the position, which is not what we want. So I will uncheck position, right? Turn on scale and uniform scale just to keep things simple and set this to negative one. Now, because this is a random effector, it's not gonna scale you know, them all to zero. We might get some very small ones, but one of the things we can do is come here into the effector tab and work with the maximum and minimum. And this will allow us to kind of make them even smaller or 
make them larger. So we can kind of get a good combination of sizes here working with this. So I think that looks pretty good. And just in terms of the render, what we have now, okay, this is what we have. We can add our liquid to it and, you know, not too bad. All right, the can texture, I probably would want to add some kind of condensation or, or things like that to it to make this even further. But for right now, I think this looks good. When you throw in the, the water drops, um, you know, starting to really get something that, that looks interesting. So what we can do now is see if there's any droplets we don't want. Maybe that's them on the top here. Maybe it's some that are close together. That's really where um, our MoGraph selection tool can come in handy. So I'm gonna make sure I have my cloner selected. Come over to my MoGraph menu, choose MoGraph selection. And just like before, um, you know, once I start clicking, that's when the little dots will show up. Now, one little word of warning. Okay, you can see, I can see all these dots, you know, from the opposite side, I can still select those. So what that means is it, you know, it's not just selecting visible ones or ones that are facing me, it's selecting all possible clones, even if they're on the complete opposite side. So that is something to be mindful of and just pay attention to. And so zooming in um, is important. And then once I make a selection of one, that's when I'm gonna need to start holding down shift um, to add to my current selection. And I can go through here and you know get rid of however many I want. You know, Maybe I don't want nearly as many on the lid or perhaps just the rim. So I can go through and make these selections. And whenever I'm done with this, right, that's when I can come through, you know, come back to my camera, see if there's anything I missed that's pretty obvious. Eh, for right now, that's just fine. And come with my cloner selected here, back to my MoGraph menu we have a hide selected effector already for us. Okay, so I do that and it's gonna hide the ones I selected. Now what this hide selection is doing, it's essentially a plane effector. It's using my MoGraph selection already, okay, because it was selected. And in the parameter tab, it's adjusting the, vis the visibility based on the alpha strength. So essentially, is it selected or is it not? If it is selected, it's disappearing. Okay, I've used this in the past where um, you can just set the scale to uniform scale and set it to negative one, not in this particular effector, but in others, and it will make things disappear as well. Okay, so that can be a great way to hide things very quickly. Now, I mentioned, you know, we can use fields with this. And so if I decide, hey, I don't want to see any on the top here for whatever reason, I could just check use fields, add, say, a box field. Okay, maybe even get rid of that inner offset. Take that box field. And what you'll see is it's going to start selecting them wherever, whichever ones are inside. So just using this field, I can kind of place this around the top of my can. Okay. Getting pretty close, something like that. And that will work as well. Now the advantage of using a field for this um, is a couple of different um, options. One, it's very easy to modify this. So at any point I can go, nope, don't want them, you know, don't want those hidden. And I can move the fields, get rid of the field. If there's more, I can do that. And uh, so that can be very helpful. The other thing is if at any point I decide, you know what, maybe I do want more. Well, that's going to screw up my original selection. Okay. Since it was based on, you know, how many I had and the numbering I had previously. Whereas with this field, it won't. So it's a lot more adaptable than making a specific selection. Unless of course, you know, you're not going to be changing the number or you don't mind editing that selection after. The other nice thing about a field is you can use it with animations. So I could use this to hide them, show them, um, and perhaps do other things like get them to maybe kind of fall down a little bit, which would be a little bit more advanced and not sure you need, well, that probably would use another effector in field, but 
you know, animation could be a big part of this. And lastly, with in regards to animation, I would need to do something with the field if I plan on actually animating the can. And that would just be making the field a child of the can. So that way, if I move it or do anything with it, um, you know, it goes along for the ride as well. So now that we have that, I can, you know, adjust that however I wish. We have gone through and added some condensation to our can, to our image. And that will do it for this video. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see and take care.